Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we record this this morning. So, uh, you, can, you can have it afterwards. You can have it afterwards. Yeah, we are. We'll be to be and share it. Now, what? What the? Amma will be the Arabi. It's lovely to be back with you. The pandemic stopped us coming. And this is our first chance to come. So, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's really good to be here. And Apostle Mary too. Uh, we enjoy being with you. We give thanks for Sister Joyce, who is with us in the spirit today. And we give thanks for her life. And while she's worshipping the Lord in heaven, she's with us here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to look at this question. The battle for Ghana. And we will have a break as we go along. But we need to take a careful look at what is happening in the spiritual. I was with a church last week. They were complaining. The government should do this. And the government should do this. I said, the battle for Ghana is not with the government. It's in the spiritual world. The battle for Ghana is the responsibility of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is our job. That is not the government's job. Our job is to see the spiritual world. So here's the first thing today. Our promise and why Satan hates us so much. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to Africa. He came to Egypt because Satan wanted to kill the baby. But the father wanted to protect Jesus. He could have sent him anywhere. But he sent him to Africa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Africa protected Jesus. And Satan couldn't kill him. And then Africa did a second thing. We let Jesus go back to Israel. We didn't hold him because he had to save us in Israel. So we took him, we protected him, and then we let him go back. Because of that, Satan has hated Africa ever since and has tried to destroy us again and again and again and again and again. And this is why he saw that Africa protected Jesus and he was afraid that one day another nation would rise up in Africa 
which would be mightily used by Jesus. He was afraid of that. And so he wanted to destroy Africa to stop that happening. He was beaten by the church and the, and the nation of Egypt and he was frightened that one day one day another nation would come which would destroy him and that is Ghana the Lord, the Lord has waited for 2,000 years for his chosen nation to save West Africa. And we are that nation. Satan has feared that one day we would come. And we have come. This is his promise to us, to Ghana. I will pour my spirit into you, and he will flow out of you into all West Africa. And all West Africa will give thanks to God for Ghana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then one day, the Lord added to that. He showed me in Ghana a great fire. And we went to the fire and we took the sticks which were burning and we threw them across the world. The fire the Lord will pour here is meant for West Africa and the world. In the Western world, faith is going down and down and down and down. And down. Where are God's people going to look for their strength? To Africa. And where in Africa? To Ghana. The Lord will look here. And so the enemy, seeing that one day we were born, made his plan to destroy us. He made his plan to destroy us. And this is what happened. The enemy came and he said, you can have as much money as you like. You can have as many possessions as you like. Because God will never judge Ghana. And in those decades ago, God's people believed that. Because this promise can only come true if we are a humble servant people. And we are not a humble servant people. We have become arrogant and proud. We have stripped the cross from Calvary and we've put money there. And one American preacher said this, the cross is about money. Just think that. 
The cross is about money. And all over this land, this heresy is being preached. God has become the provider of money and things. And at the same time, into Ghana has come this idea God will never judge us. God will never judge us. I do not know where this has come from. It has not come from the Bible. God judged even his own people. God judges to bless. To put things right. But he judges every one of his children who he thinks is running away from the truth. The truth in Ghana has become money, possessions, power, to me, success, and against this, God will never judge us. In, into this situation, can I ask you? to look at the land today. The CD is now 17.4 on the market today. The government may not want you to know, so look on the markets for yourself. Children in my school are hungry. Children in my school are hungry. Because we cannot afford the food. We could not have come today unless Christians in Accra gave us the money for the fuel. Brothers and sisters, give careful thought for your ways. We see this in the nation and we should be asking is God judging us? Has it begun already? Because we have strayed from our promise. Now we are fighting now to get that promise back. But we are fighting being pushed back and back and back. The enemy has his hands on the nation now. Now the preachers in the big churches, oh, they're doing fine with their money because they just take more from the people. I don't know which markets they are shopping in, but they're not shopping in mine where the food prices are dangerous. We are now fighting for the future of Ghana to get our promise back and to, and to receive the outpouring of the Spirit we need. Now, as a prophet, that's what I see. Most of the church does not want to hear. I can tell you why. Because if I start saying this and you start listening, many pastors will lose their money. 
When God's people wake up and say, Why did you lead us into this desert to die? And they don't want that. They want their position and their money. So they don't want to hear. Prophets are used to this. For 3,000 years, we have been speaking to people that do not want to listen. Let me explain something. My job is to deliver the message to you. Once I have done that, my work is finished. And I move on. What you do about it is not my problem. But once I deliver it, the church has a problem. Because then it cannot say, We did not know. Once a prophet speaks, the church is in trouble. Because it cannot go to Father and say, Why didn't you tell us? And he'll say this for 30 years. This Western man went up and down the country preaching the same message day after day after day. I have been prophesying this judgment for 30 years. I am not surprised at what I am seeing. But many in the churches are surprised because they haven't listened. So there we are. This is where we are today. It is the battle for Ghana. The enemy dragging us one way, pride and wealth and being seen and important. And Jesus Christ, the servant of his father, calling us in the other way. And here we are. What is the outcome of the battle? This is how Satan sees it. If he can get on the throne of Ghana, then he can say to the Lord, you no longer rule this land. So you are no longer king of kings and lord of lords. <laughs> because I reign here. So get off your throne. I'm going to sit there. I want to be God. And I will be. Because once I own Ghana, I own the nation through which you are going to bless all the other nations. And you can no longer have your way. That is what is going on. That is what is going on in our nation. And I begin to think that the enemy has chosen this nation <coughs> to try and get authority over the world. That the battle for the world is being fought here. Because if he can get authority over this nation, he will soon get authority over all West Africa. And then he can pull the Lord down and reign. That, that is where we are. We are standing at a very important moment 
In the history of our nation, if we are able to me to persuade Father to pour His Spirit on us, all will be well. But if we cannot, in the year 586, before the birth of Jesus, the Babylonians destroyed Israel. Babylon for for say Israel. It was the judgment. Seventy years later, the Lord allowed them to return to their land. In the year 135, after the birth of Jesus, Israel rebelled against Rome. The Romans came and destroyed Jerusalem, pulled down the temple, and built a shrine to Jupiter on the Temple Mount. We are still we are still waiting for the end of that judgment. 2,000 years of waiting. When God judges, we will know it. And it doesn't last for five minutes. If we lose, what will our children have? What will our grandchildren have? Or our great-grandchildren have? A corrupt and broken nation? With others ruling over us? A nation of poverty? Of hunger? Of ignorance? What will happen if the judgment continues? Where will Ghana finish? But if we win, if we overcome, then revival fire can fall. Revival fire changes nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that's where we are. We're going to look at two different things now. One is what we are up against in our enemy. And the other, what revival fire looks like. So we should pray a little. Lord, we worship you. We praise your name, O Lord. There is none like you. You rule over the nations. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And you have broken the enemy at Calvary. Yet, Lord, you allow him some room to move. And he is moving against us. And Father, your people are sleeping. Your people are sleeping. They are carrying on in the same old ways. And that is what has brought us to this point. And we see no change. And the enemy is growing stronger. We see it in our currency. We see it in our fuel. We see it in our markets. The enemy is rising up over us. And we bow before you today. And we confess that it's true. 
We that we are facing the judgment. Maybe it's already here. So help us today. We need to understand our enemy and we need to understand you. Help us to concentrate and listen because the days are running out. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, brothers and sisters, what I'll do is I'll stop the audio here. So this is the end of audio one.